What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Church of Jesus Christ, the only one true church in the universe, an omniscient universe, God's omniscient universe. The church doesn't stop just because it's not Sunday. I realize that. But in God's uh, said green universe, he always is omniscient, omnipresent. We always have to do the Lord's work, keeping the mind stayed on God, doing the things that God might require one to do. Or else, in 2 Corinthians 13, chapter 5, we have to test ourselves to see whether you're living in the faith that God requires us to live in. Examine yourselves. Perhaps you yourselves do not realize that Jesus Christ is in the midst of you. Unless, of course, you've failed the challenge by going to movies, giving The Rock a whole bunch of money. But I hope you don't understand that we didn't go to movies. No, nope. what we did was we sought the Comforter instead. We sought the Master. We sought Jesus Christ. And his mes mission here, Matthew 10, verse 34, the mission of Jesus Christ actually cannot be forgotten, is do not suppose that my mission on earth is to spread peace. My mission is to spread not peace, but the sword, division. I've come to set man at odds with his father, his daughter, her mother, the whole family against one another. He who will not take up his cross and come after me is not worthy of me. He who seeks only himself brings himself to ruin. That's the master's mystery with the mental concoctions in the flesh. That's why this is very important. Whereas he who brings himself to nothing for me discovers who he is, discovers who he really is. That's true identity. That's what this whole mission of Jesus Christ is all about. So again, in Ma Matthew chapter 11, come to me all who are weary and find life burdensome. And I will refresh you. Take, take my yoke upon your shoulders and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. Your souls will find rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We will learn what, like, what God's plan is. You know, it's more about God's plan, not basically what we do with our lives. We're just uh, now, with the senses being reborn, now are being imbued with the Holy Spirit. So we don't take thought for our lives like in Matthew chapter 6. We just keep seeking the kingdom of God every day. We wake up. That's what we do. We pray. We seek the kingdom of the Lord. Remember a little bit about prayer. Sit down in the silence. Relax. Relax. Remember, you can't think about God. You can't feel anything about God. Nothing in this world is going to get you God. What you have to acknowledge is that I am in the midst of you already. And just wait like a friend. You'd wait for one instead of running around wasting time. You just sit in time and space like the plant sitting in the sun soaking up the rays. That's basically what prayer is. And the more you do this, the more the Lord will fill you up with his spirit. And eventually you will have that God realization. You will have God contact. That's what this is all about. Coming to me is that realization. And God will give you the light that enlightens all men. He will give you his, his religion, his purpose. That's the whole point of gaining and drinking the Holy Grail is to get that light because that light is in the transcendental kingdom of God already. And that light of the Lord, the luminous light, is the light that governs that kingdom. So that's why one has to get that enlightenment in order to be governed by God and God's grace and mercy on this earth. This is how you do it. And uh, John chapter 14, 26 well, this is a great one, actually, 24. He who does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine. That's what the master said. That, that's all we're saying as devotees. This isn't our teaching, and that's what he told the world. This isn't my teaching. It comes from the Father who sent me. This much I have told you while I was still with you, that the Helper, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, will instruct you in everything. And remind you of all that I told you. Peace is my farewell to you. My peace is my gift to you. I will not give you peace as you find in the world. So don't be distressed or fearful. So if you find yourself in barren situations, you got no money, no this, no that, the other, and you are on this path, remember, that's the peace that the world can give. Now even if you're in the midst of the world, like you have friends, family, job, blah, 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 you still have to seek this peace. 
and you have to distinguish now this is where spiritual discernment comes in your prayers and this peace because you could have the peace of your family friends and job and that's the thing too how can you discern the peace of the spirit so that's what has, one has to practice day by day moment to moment remember prayer can last 10 to 15 seconds or it could last five minutes 10 minutes or it could last an hour it's all depend remember the Holy Spirit takes over one senses but for the beginners it's good to just start slowly start with 10 or 15 seconds here and there throughout the day maybe two three times within the hour it's just a remembrance at first you sit down and you just remind yourself where I am is holy grounds and then you just basically like the Sun puts his rays upon the seed you just have to relax in time and space because you are in remember the human being doesn't realize this but the earth is going around the Sun everything has is and is under the guidance of the one intelligence already see you're no different than the earth just because you can move around freely and the earth can't it's still in time and space and governed by the one intelligence and the human beings under the false ego have their own intelligence that's what this will dissolve that's what the master will teach you is these teachings now let's get on to these teachings <laughs> I've been trying to read this page for a long time uh, but I just want to get a little bit into it here too at the at the front because it's very important here because basically his relationship to God is all that matters and the devotee that finds himself in these miserable conditions is because of his lack of enlightenment and relationship to God so the perfectly realized soul has no concept of how the material body is even in here afterwards once he starts elevating himself into prayer where did this darkness come from so again the mind has to be controlled it'll be stilled like a flame and the mind will cease from all material interactions so the body of a such a liberated person upon this path of prayer along with his senses is taking charge of the Holy Spirit so that's what we that's basically becoming like a servant of God being a surrendered soul now this spirit of the great I am will take over your life so more about the hellish conditions here too because this actual pay this this doctrine is still the highway to hell doctrine anyways so the living entities like I said too they have no idea what good is and they think that whatever is good things of this world that's what the master preaches why call me good there's only one good the Spirit of God and this is what it's like being devoid of the Spirit there's no truthfulness in people cleanliness mercy uh, attractiveness spiritual intelligence shyness austerity fame forgiveness control of mind control of se senses fortune and all such opportunities that's what it's like being devoid of the Spirit one should not associate with a fool who doesn't have transcendental knowledge, who is bereft of knowledge, of self-realization, and who is no more than a dancing dog in the hands of women. So this is what we avoid on the path. This is for devotees like myself, right? You want to navigate now your existence. Well, this is how you do it. You avoid basically everybody. <laughs> everybody that doesn't have transcendental consciousness. Why? Because you're on this path. You've been given the way. You've been shown the way of God and what's more important living a going watching the movie or living the way of God and self-realization that's why this has to be approached very logically remember the human beings already born in death he doesn't understand his first fall from grace anyways he doesn't believe in nothing anyway so the entity is already walking around in death and this teaching takes the seed of death out of one's consciousness and gives one their true identity which is the light that enlightens all men in John chapter 1 so that's why logically the entity has to take this very seriously and reasonably as well that this absolves death my relationship with God which is the spirit but because of the infatuation of the body the people take the body as a source of pleasure sense gratification and basically when they do this a man who's attached from uh, with his body is basically just lusting after women and if he follows after that he's going to be in the company of men who also lust after women as well too so the Lord wants us to understand that the illusion of the mind 
the flesh that takes thought for itself that member hypnotizes the eye into believing in the flesh the Lord wants us to realize that this is very strong this it's like basically a strong drink you drink it you're gonna get drunk that's what the human being sober consciousness already is it's already contaminated with the flesh and that flesh is very strong like one being pulled like a dog on the end of a rope and that's what the, he's telling us here too that this incredible Maya this illusionary thinking hypnotization if you will is very strong in the shape of a woman who by the mere movements of her eyebrows can keep the greatest men conquerors of the world under her grip so that's how strong just when a man looks at a woman he thinks this attraction no it's just that's the illusionary energies of the flesh one has to very much distinguish what he's experiencing and what basically transcendental truth is if one is looking at a woman and he's being bewildered by the appearance of her he has to understand that that is what is called Maya it's basically your thoughts about the flesh which isn't true it's not real so when men have to look at women now they have to look at them with equality basically all they all have it's not just women it's men everyone you look at has to be uh, looked at undistinguishably you can't you have to treat all these people as the same as the I in me is the I in you it doesn't matter what they look like anymore not even different variations of females or the different variation of males it doesn't matter they all have to be in prayer and following this path now in order to clear the mind the contaminated consciousness the one self cannot identify or attach itself to the fleshly forms so that takes practice that's why this is very difficult practice because the people like myself and people like yourself are always going to have to take th now instead of taking thought for the flesh like in Matthew chapter 6 we abide in the word in John chapter 15 so this abiding in the word is just always a remembrance so when you're walking around in public you could keep relaxed in this meditative state because now we're not the, the Lord also in these states has his mercy upon us we're not in fear anymore and we're not weather men you know criticizing others anymore we're following this path now don't judge that's Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 just straight up for us do not judge why because the judgment day of the Lord and the Lord is the judge of all souls so that's another thing with the entities we don't walk I don't walk around judging anymore criticizing anymore looking at the bodily shapes anymore and judging that all after being brought into spiritual consciousness and prayer gets absolved because you understand that the Lord is the judge of all these things as he says he is the correct measure of all these things too so even the sizes of people just like the size of planets this is very profound because the planets are all different sizes and the measure of the space apart is also different and it, well I'm may, there's harmony in between these differences also from all these different shapes and sizes from what the Lord calls the measure so even though now we we can't measure up people anymore with the fleshly concepts of our intellect as well that intellect has to abide in the word like in Matthew chapter 15 or else he's going to be taken away here and because he's taken away here that's the problem the entities will never go back into this well of prayer anyways abiding in the word in Matthew chapter 15 just or sorry John chapter 15 is basically uh living in the atmosphere of prayer CC from man who's remembering all these things too even in your experience you could you could lose your job yeah and then you have to go home and pray you have to now in order to counteract this condition in the world the only way is by prayer now so one has to be very courageous in this path but it's also the Lord guiding one as well too so that's one you have to understand the spirit will start taking control of one's senses so even if you lose your job what are you gonna do you're a devotee of the Lord now you're not gonna look for another one what you're gonna do is pray pray to the Lord pray to the Lord's mercy what do you want me to do Lord that's also what we pray as well too because in the, we're in this material existence we don't know anything the Lord's the only intelligence 
that's why we pray to the Lord as well too. Lord, oh, give me more light. That's the only also viable thing to pray in the silence. Give me more light and then wait in the silence to receive. That's basically the only thing you pray for. Give me light on what I should do here. You're not my will, but your will. That's also another thing you can always remember in prayer. Even if you're going, it doesn't matter what you're going through. I have to remember, I'm telling you this because I went through this crap. Even though I lost everything, I had to still believe in my own walk. And in order to walk the walk, you got to talk the talk or, to, or vice versa. So I'm telling you, I had to do these things. That's why they're very scary. I, I understand if people start crying and they don't get it at first. I don't care. That's why I had to do these things. I had to do. That's why it says we can't fail. We didn't fail the test. So if people have problems with this, they don't want to pray for their lives. <laughs> There's no solution for you. Go out and get another job then. Make some that's again sense gratification. Now that the entity doesn't have any money, has to gratify that sense. Go out and get another job. You're just going to go back in a circle of crap anyways. And the Lord won't be able to raise you up into his activity of what he wants you to do in life anyway. So life that's why I'm telling you about jobs is because the only remedy for human beings, it seems, is just employment. If you've got a effing problem in life, you just need a job. That's the human remedy for anybody. <laughs> That's ridiculous. So the human entities, their only remedy in life is just employment, economic advancement. You got, you're, you're effed in life, get a job. It doesn't matter. That's, that's what everybody says. Get a job. That's the human being's remedy in life, you see. He doesn't have spiritual consciousness. So if you, what if you can't get a job and work like myself? Like all the other entities are screaming at me too. Oh, why can't you? What? Believe me, you think I'd like to sit on the couch? I was working for 20 years, 10 years in the gym. Why the hell would I stop doing that? All the entities after they can scream, go get a job. But then they can't answer these simple questions. Why would I stop? I stop. Oh, because some, I, they don't know that I ran into spiritual consciousness, that the Lord plucked me out. I chose you from out of the world. So that's why I'm telling you, you could go. I went through all this crap alone in my life. I didn't have anybody. There wasn't any friends I could rely on because those got out of my life. There wasn't family I could rely on because those got out of my life. So for a little bit, I was Tom Hanks and Castaway. And I was scared as well because I didn't know. I, didn't, I knew I was hopeless and I didn't have any future first. So that's very scary to the individual. So that's why they have to overcome fear. They have to realize that that's just their thoughts pumping out into this illusion of a body. And they have to come to prayer. They have to come to me, all who are heavy laden and burdened. Or else, the, basically the solution for life is just go get a job. So if you can't get a job, what are you going to do? That's when people commit suicide. They crawl into a hole or they just get depressed. or I don't know what other people do. Because when Deuteronomy came up, I gave you life and death. I chose life anyways. I couldn't sit around and kill myself because of all the discipline I had in the gym for 10 years. All that activity. That's not a waste of time, you see. So once the living entities, the human beings have an accident, they give up. And that's the thing too, you don't give up though. That's what discipline is. If you hadn't worked hard in this area in life, now that you have a challenge in life, that that's what training's all about. To keep your discipline, your effort, your focus. See, it's not just that, that's why the entities go to the gym and they have their little biceps and they go home and try to get some girls. And then when they confront difficulties in life, they fold like decks of cards. That's what training's all about actually. So you have and maintain your focus, discipline, concentration, and effort, even if the chips are down in life, even if you are an idiot like me in the wilderness. That's what the Lord says about this. That's what he calls the Tom Hanks experience. He calls it the wilderness. That's why his prophets come out of the wilderness. John the Baptist came out of the wilderness eating crickets and honey, preaching the, set, the first coming of Christ. There's one greater than I, that I'm unfit to tie his sandals. He's coming. The Lord raises his prophets out of the wilderness. That's what he says in Doctrines and Covenants as well, too. 
that people like myself are just going to be out in the wilderness, <laughs> the nothing, and you got to come to me. And if I, if you don't, if you fail, not only this is a life and death, the Lord would have just left me laying around in my filth. It didn't matter even too about my mental tenacity, you see. The mental tenacity wanes over time anyways. You don't have the willpower to, you know, uh, uh, confront these miserable, fearful conditions. I did, but even that started waning. So that's why spiritual consciousness, it, it gives you the void, which is no fear, all righteousness, all virtue. That's when the Lord gives you his grace. That's what the comforter is. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, you see. The world can give you all these pieces of friends, family, money, and jobs, and economic advancement. Lovely. But not as the world gives, the spirit. And once it comes, it could. I don't know what it's going to do for anybody in their life. Can anybody uh, predict what is going to happen to me? None. None. So that's one thing, too, on this path. The path is straight and narrow, and like the Lord said, out of this world, it's all full of miseries. I knew once I read Book 2, Ezra, Chapter 7, the Lord said right in the beginning of the chapter, this world to cross into my kingdom is going to be full of miseries, miseries, and hardships, and trials. That's why <laughs> I'm preaching the doctrine, because the Lord gave me the real deal holy field. And if I didn't, if I was like Buster Douglas and folded under Holyfield, then you know where Buster Douglas is now? Hidden in time and space somewhere, forgotten, because he didn't rise to the occasion. So if I didn't stand up to this Holyfield in my life, and believe me, Holyfield's a warrior, and that's what certain trials are in life, dog. When a Vander Holyfield comes knocking at your door, are you tough enough? Do you have the balls? To stand in your courage and ground and try to fight Evander Holyfield. Try to confront these trials with the comforter, you see. And the comforter, he's the trainer in your corner. It's Jesus Christ. He's training you up to fight Evander Holyfield anyways. Or else you're just going to get knocked out like Buster Douglas or be a crybaby like Mike Tyson and bite his ear. See, when people have challenges, they try to cheat. That's why Tyson couldn't rise to the occasion, and he wasn't a world champion. He wasn't a true world champion. This is, again, the Lord's going to put you on the straight and narrow, because in this life, there's that fire on the one side and the deep waters on the other. And this, this life is full of trials, and if you don't go to God, you're done. You're just done. There ain't going to be any doctors to help you. There ain't going to be any people to help you. You're done. And good luck scraping by things. And like the Lord says here in this transcendental teaching, just getting crumbs off of people's plates. <coughs> it's all you got to look forward to for the rest of your days if you're going through nonsense, dog, is the crumbs from others and walking around like a sad dog on a leash. That's if you don't lift up the Son of Man within you. We'll call it quits for now because it's been good. Thank you guys for tuning in. And until next time.